Hey all, welcome to ShareTrack. This is Raj here. I'm looking at the Bluebird share price firming up uh, significantly against all odds. So I wanted to check what's happening in there and what is making this move and whether it is durable. Let's check that out. Let's get started. Welcome back friends. First, let us look at the short uh, shorts data that I have uh, pulled up here. So here is the shorts interest. Uh, that um, I pulled up from various sources. So we have, um, I would ignore the number of shares because it doesn't mean much. Should always be looked as a ratio. So short interest ratio is got uh, around 2.91 days to cover and short interest percentage float, it's around 14.33 in NASDAQ, but off exchange short volume is 52.86. So I think the short interest in Bluebird is substantial with uh, so many shares held short, representing 14.33% of the float. The short interest ratio of 2.91 days to cover indicates the number of days it would take for short sellers to cover their position based on average trading volume for this stock on the exchange. The off exchange short volume, including dark pool volume is significant, uh, constituting around 52.86% of the total short volume. This off exchange activity might impact the stock differently compared to regular market trades. And considering the high short interest and the off exchange short volume, there is potential for a short squeeze in my opinion, especially if positive developments or news arise for Bluebird Bio. So investors covering their short positions may contribute to upward pressure on the stock market because if they have a short position and the price of the stock keeps on going up, they'll be compelled to close their stock position, they'll, they'll be compelled to buy and that again pushes the stock price up. So uh, given the data, a short squeeze is plausible, but it's essential to monitor any catalysts or developments that might trigger such a scenario. That's what we are going to do in this video and draw some conclusion. Next, let us look up at the stock ownership and peer comparison uh, to see if we can get some clues out there. So here we are on the Simply Wall Street website and you can see that uh, insiders have actually sold a lot of uh, shares. Uh, none of the insiders have bought any shares, that is number one. Second is 69% of uh, the holders are institutional holders and general public has got around 30.5. So there's a bigger portion in float as compared to our typical uh, genomic companies. And again, the top holders are State Street, BlackRock, Vanguard. So these are all bigger uh, companies that are holding it. Now, in terms of uh, valuation, if we were to look at um, uh, Bluebird, I think it's uh, overvalued when it comes to the price to sale ratio, especially if you look at CRISPR therapeutics and then you look at uh, uh, Bluebird Bio. And Verve, of course, is looking very, very uh, interesting out here. Now, if we were to look at the price to sales ratio for the industry, the industry average is around uh, 15 point uh, four times. So Bluebird is much better than the industry. And I, I'm looking at this chart out here, uh, which shows forecasted annual earnings growth and forecasted annual revenue growth. So in terms of revenue growth, I think Bluebird Bio is going to do very well as per the analysts out here. Uh, it's going to outperform the industry. But in terms of earnings growth, it's a laggard and um, it will have to do a lot of improvements uh, in order to uh, have a better EPS and as far as shareholders are concerned, uh, EPS is quite important. Of course, revenue growth is also important, but EPS is uh, more important because that's what will add to the uh, bottom line. So we have to look at the earnings per share and uh, Bluebird doesn't look that great as compared to the industry. In other words, you have other place where you can uh, put the money. So that's what I have uh, for you in, um, in, in this chart. But I have also pulled up some uh, shorts uh, data and financial data. I've already shared the shorts data with you. I would like to share the financial data with you. Here is the bunch of uh, financial data, data I curated so that we could have a glimpse at the overall performance of the company. So I'm taking the time to market amount because the Q4 um, 2023 uh, release is not yet in place. So the revenue has been improving in the last couple of quarters thanks to sales of Zinteglo and Skysona. Uh, gross profit has not been doing well. I, I guess it's because they're trying to ramp up the sales and spending on marketing. The operating expenses has go gone up, net income has been deteriorating and EPS has also been deteriorating. And in terms of uh, total assets, the liabilities are not looking as good and equity was less. And this was remedied by um, Bluebird, 
by issuing uh, uh, equity shares. I think I have the I have the press release out here, uh, which uh, talks about uh, the equity share issue. And this was on December 19, 2023. And the offer was expected to close on December 22, 2023. So that has already been done. And uh, that, in a way, is going to address the deterioration that we are seeing in the total uh, equity and that will improve the debt equity ratio as well. So I, I can see that there is a little bit of improvement happening, but it's a long road ahead uh, for uh, uh, Bluebird Bio. Next, I want to take a look at the price chart. And here we are in uh, TradingView platform looking at the price chart out here. And friends, as you can see, we had this huge gap down. And since then there was consolidation, then the share fell further. And um, uh, I think uh, this was in response to the equity issue, the dilution, and then there was a consolidation. Now the share has started picking up and we are supposed to have uh, the earnings today. And the expectation is uh, minus 0 0.65 for EPS and 16.401 million for uh, revenue. And I'm worried about the 16.401 million. I could absolutely be wrong, like I was wrong with uh, EPS for uh, CRISPR therapeutics. I was way off the mark. I was very pessimistic. Um, I think uh, maybe Bluebird can do it, but uh, minus 0 0.65 is what they're expecting. And in the past, uh, they had reported minus 0 0.66, so it's not a very big stretch as such. So they should be able to achieve that. And in the past, if you look at their quarterly earnings, uh, they had come below estimate, they had reported 12.392, and right now the expectation is 16.401 million, which could include uh, improvement in Zinteglo and Skysona sales, and also the addition of uh, Life Genia sales. So all put together, 16.401 seems reasonable to me. Uh, whether they can meet it or not is a different story because it involves a whole lot of things, like patients being qualified, them getting approved by the payers, and then uh, them being uh, medically qualified to go through the uh, procedure. So all that thing put together, uh, there are a lot of uncertainties out there, but we will assume that it's going to be uh, met. And that's the opinion that uh, probably the market has uh, in terms of the pricing. That's one way of looking at the firming of the, uh, up of the pricing that uh, Bluebird may meet and probably exceed uh, all these. And it could also be by the rumor sell the news kind of a build up happening out here so that's that's what it seems like i don't see any major uh, technical patterns out here that i can talk about uh, except a golden cross that has happened here which is a bullish uh, uh, aspect the other thing i can see here is that the rsi is very close to being overbought and it's uh, right on cue for the earnings to come up uh, out here so I think that uh, if the earnings come up after hours, then we'll see some interesting um, market action for Bluebird after hours, depending on what happens with the uh, earnings result. Now, in terms of the conclusions, I think I'd like to recap all my thoughts and uh, put them together here. So uh, Zinteglo and uh, Skysona sales, uh, they have been around uh, 5.4 million for the last two quarters, if I'm not mistaken. and. Uh, addition of life genia revenues um, should uh, should probably prop it up a little bit more but we haven't seen the quality of life genia revenues so far so far you know there's a competition also with the uh, crispr therapeutics out there and crispr is cheaper and crispr doesn't have the black box uh, uh, label from fda so i think uh, uh, it's going to be a interesting uh, revenue call we'll have to see the numbers before we can uh, believe it and also there has been severe equity dilution along the uh, way and uh, the road to profitability i think is pretty long it could take three or four years before uh, bluebird can be profitable assuming they are a going concern and um, i think the risk factor uh, is that uh, they may run out of money or they may do more equity dilution in order to keep going uh, and they have three gene therapies in the market, which is absolutely a fabulous thing to, thing to have. But I, it's not clear what is their end game, because in their pipeline, they have nothing else. They don't have anything in their pipeline, anything new in their pipeline. There is not even a preclinical candidate which is being in the research stage. 
So all this leads to the belief that the upcoming earnings may not look great and shorts are in place to capitalize on that. The high level of equity dilution also lends to shorting the stock because when equity dilution happens, you expect the stock price to fall. And the firming up of the stock price is against all odds in my personal opinion. And I think in case of a short squeeze, it's possible for the shares to drop after the settlement date. Uh, so one needs to be careful. And in my opinion, the earnings this evening is going to be one of the catalysts. It could be positive or negative. I don't know which way it's going to be because the revenue data is quite opaque when it comes to Bluebird Bio. So what would I do? I have around 1000 Bluebird. It's all positive uh, in, my, uh, in my portfolio. Uh, I haven't uh, shorted it. I haven't done any covered calls on it yet. Uh, I'm just waiting to see what happens. It's a very small stake and I'm willing to hold on. I'm going to give the benefit of doubt to Bluebird because they're fighting like hell uh, to stay afloat and to capitalize on all their uh, hard work so far. So I'm rooting for Bluebird, but at the same time, I'm a bit cautious. That's why I don't have too much of Bluebird shares. It's just 1,000, which is a small amount which I can afford to lose. So that's what I'm holding. And if you have Bluebird in your portfolio, please share your opinions in the comment section below. I really love to hear what you think. At the end of the day, I'm a retail investor like yourself. I don't have extra insight. I'm just sharing my analysis the way I do it. Uh, and I hope that you guys can share your feedback and we'll take it from there. So with that, uh, I'm wishing the very best for all Bluebird shareholders for the earnings. And I haven't seen it so far. I've been searching for it frantically since morning. So I'm assuming that it's going to come after, uh, after the market closes. So stay tuned for another video after the earnings come out. Thanks and have a great day. Bye for now.